This is geometry chapter 11. There's a lot in lessons three, four, and five, so I wanted to make this video to help you guys. So in lesson three, we talked about uh, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90, and the Pythagorean triplets. So 30, 60, 90, the triplet is one square root of three, two, with the one side, we're using similar triangles and those proportions, right? Um, this is the length of the side opposite the 30 degree, opposite the 60, opposite the 90. So if I have a triangle and I have a value, uh, the length opposite 30, that's always where I wanna go, opposite 30. Then we go to the hypotenuse, we multiply by two. So from 30 to the hypotenuse, multiply by two. From 30 to opposite 60, multiply by square root of three. All right, that's the easiest when we're going from the 30. From the 30 to the hypotenuse, multiply by two. 30 to opposite 60, multiply by square root of three. If I have the hypotenuse, to go from the hypotenuse, we always, always, always want to go opposite the 30, if we're given the hypotenuse or opposite 60, all right? We take half of it. So this would be 15 halves, all right? Then we go from the 30 to opposite 60, we multiply by square root of three. So it's 15 square root of three over two. If I have opposite the 60, I'm gonna do two of it, all right? No, I'm just gonna do one. Let's say this side is 15. To go from opposite 60, the 60 degree angle to opposite 30 because we always want to go there first. We're going to divide by square root of three. All right. When I divide by square root of three, I have a radical in the denominator. In algebra, you always rationalize your denominator. You have a fraction with a rational denominator. Square root of three is not rational. We rationalize by multiplying by that square root over itself. So you end up with 15 square root of three over three. That's the length of that side. Then to get to the hypotenuse, we multiply by two. So you're multiplying this number by two. Look, 15 square root of three over three times two is really two over one. You multiply the 15 times the two. So it's 30 square root of three over three, but that can be simplified. I can simplify the 30 and the three. The three becomes one, the 30 becomes 10. So really it's 10 square root of three. All right, so from opposite 60 to opposite 30, we're divided by square root of three. Dividing by the square root of three is the same thing as multiplying. Dividing by the square root of three is the same thing as multiplying by square root of three over three. So really I could take the leg opposite that 60 degree, multiply by square root of three over three to get to the leg opposite 30. All right, 45, 45, 90s. Pythagorean triple is one, one square root of two. It's an isosceles right triangle. So you only have, you're either going from the leg to the hypotenuse or the hypotenuse to the leg. If the leg is two to get from the leg to the hypotenuse, you multiply by square root of two. It's two square root of two. This other leg, it's just the same value. It's an isosceles right triangle. To get from the hypotenuse, that doesn't look like isosceles, but we're gonna imagine it is. To get from the 
hypotenuse to the leg, you divide by square root of two. So six divided by square root of two, but you're in algebra, or you're in your upper level master, you're in geometry, which should include algebra. You multiply by square root of two over square root of two, because that the value of that is effectively one. I'm not changing the value. One times anything is the other thing, all right? So we end up with six square root of two over two. Six and two can be simplified. The two becomes one, the six becomes three. It's three square root of two. All right, so to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, you multiply by square root of two. To go from the hypotenuse to the leg, you divide by square root of two. Again, dividing by the square root of two, just like divided by the square root of three is the same thing as multiplying by square root of two over two. So, I can just multiply this by square root of two over two. It's seven square root of two over two. When do we see these triangles often? All right, the 30, 60, 90s. If I have an equilateral triangle, equilateral, equilateral is equal angular, right? And I draw a line, it's actually an altitude, from that vertex to the opposite side. This becomes a 30, 60, 90. So the altitude of an equilateral triangle <clears throat> divides the entire triangle into two 30, 60, 90 triangles. All right, the 45, 45, 90. I, we see this in squares. If I have a square and I draw a diagonal in a square, <laughs> the diagonal makes two 45, 45, 90, such that the diagonal of a square, you can calculate by using that one, one square root of two. You take the length of any side and multiply it by the square root of two. For the equilateral triangle, when I draw this altitude, it divides this base into equal parts. So if its entire length is eight, this side becomes four. It's opposite 30. Opposite 60 is four square root of three. The, this side is twice and it's eight. All right, so if this side is nine, then the diagonal is nine square root of two.